bones up from my bones up with you from this place. Joseph died at the age of 110. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Glad. May your hearts, hearts be, glad. be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Be glad, you lowly ones, may your hearts be glad. Glory in his holy name, rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Be glad, holy ones, may your hearts be glad. Your descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Be glad, you holy ones, may your hearts be glad. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the Spirit of God rests upon you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, no disciple is above his teacher, no slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher, for the slave that he became, become, for the slave that he become like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more those of his household? Therefore do not be afraid of them. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. We hear this beautiful story of Joseph, one of the sons of Jacob, who forgave his brothers. Now it's interesting the way they set the stage. It's like, well, we better lie and say that dad wants you to forgive us or, you know, <laughs> I think he would have forgiven them anyways. But it's amazing how we try and rationalize and how they try and cover their own deceit. And I think what's interesting to me, one of the great proofs of this gospel and the story, salvation history, as they relate it to us through the scriptures, they don't put these people in their best light. <laughs> they don't just say, oh, we know our brother's such a good and noble man, he'll certainly forgive us. No, they resort to lying and deceit to make sure that he forgives them. Why do they do that? I mean, why would they put that part of the story in there? Um, we go, th the whole scriptures is like this. David, a man after, uh, you know, um, God's own heart, right? He commits murder and adultery. And they put that in the story. They don't leave it out. I mean, that's not a very becoming attitude of King David, right? 
but it's showing how God works through our brokenness. He's not only here for the saints, but most especially, he's here for the sinners. And when we have this deep conversion of heart, hopefully, we can sin less and less. And we hear Paul struggle. Lord, take this thorn from my side, please. I begged him three times, as Paul says. And what's the answer? My grace is enough for you. We are not saved by what we do. This is one of the great misunderstandings, and many Protestants think that Catholics believe that we're saved by our deeds. We are not. We are saved by Jesus Christ. And when we know Jesus Christ, that transforms us. And our deeds merely are a demonstration of our gratitude to God. We don't say novenas or rosaries or have a great devotion to Our Lady because somehow that's going to help us earn heaven. We don't earn heaven. We say novenas, pray the rosary, have great devotion to Our Lady out of our gratitude to Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. Because we place in our life a priority that is above all else. We put him first and we try and imitate him. Why do Catholics have this devotion to Our Lady? It's simple. Jesus loved his mom and we're called to imitate Jesus. Our love for Mary is in direct imitation of Jesus Christ's own love for his mother. That's why we do the things we do. That is what is to inform our entire life. As John the Baptist says, I must decrease, he must increase. This should be our daily goal, goal, to not live as we want to live, but to live as Christ would have us live. That's not easy to discern. It takes prayer, it takes meditation, and it's a lifelong journey. But let us take Our Lady's words to heart, right? The last recorded words in the scripture. Do whatever he tells you. And how did he teach us to pray? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. To be people of great mercy, to be people of great love, and to realize that most people do not know what they do not know. And we may be their only encounter with the kingdom of God through our mercy, through our love, through our tolerance. And if we do this, this is great. And as the, as the gospel tells us, we must never deny Christ. Who cares if they kill us for it? Because we know we live forever. That's our faith. Let us pray that it may be, that it may be strengthened in each and every one of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples, we pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, and they may, they may know and serve the common good, and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. Or Leo Wallace, that uh, little child, I'm not sure he needs a mass said for him because I think he's in heaven, but certainly the way the theology works, um, it's called suffrage. So if the mass and the prayers aren't needed for little Leo, which I don't think they are, they, can go, they will go to the person who most needs it. You know? So uh, the intention of this mass, little Leo Wallace, we pray to the Lord. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, faith-filled marriages, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. That all corruption be uncovered in our world and those responsible for it lose their power or be converted so that we can have leaders that respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law, we pray to the Lord. That people may truly discover and know if they are disposed to receive the Eucharist worthily and that if they're not, such as supporting abortion or these other heinous things in our society, 
that they not present themselves for communion, to not add sacrilege to their own um, deception. We pray to the Lord. For an end of the pandemic, Lord, we pray to the Lord that we may always have the courage and boldness to proclaim Christ and never deny him. We pray to the Lord. For all the healthcare workers, first responders, firefighters, police officers, all those people who have worked so hard to keep our society healthy, secure, and safe, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those people who've been deceived, who've been fueled into hatred and, you know, ginning up division in our society, that their eyes may be open and realize that all are children of God and that we need to treat everyone with respect and not hold on to past hurts or past evil. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.